Hey guys, and welcome to our lesson on Confucius, loca located under the Confucius tab of the Ancient China Teaching and Learning website resource. In this lesson, we're going to have an introduction to Confucius. So, by the end of this lesson, you need to know who Confucius was, and by the end of this lesson, you need to be able to explain the significance of Confucius's teachings and his influence on ancient Chinese dynasties. So task one is an overview of Confucianism. So what you're going to do is write down these notes here. There is a fair bit there. And then watch this video from Ted Ed after called Who Was Confucius? So Confucius was a Chinese philosopher that lived during the Zhao dynasty. He taught people how to gain wisdom and understanding through guidelines rec recorded in a text called the Analects that he made. Confucius believed that evil in people was a result of poor upbringing and that education could create good people and a, just, and a justice in society. He also formed a set of guidelines on family values and practices. Confucius influenced ancient China more than anyone else, and in 13, sorry, 134 BCE, Confucianism became the official belief system of the government. His ideas and attitudes have lasted more than 2,000 years. Very, very long time. So that's your first task there. Your second task is to complete this Venn diagram on Confucianism and comparing it and describing it alongside Catholicism. So what you need to do on one side, you could have Confucianism. On the other side, you have Catholicism, quite a popular religion in Australia. And then in the middle, you're saying what's similar. On the outside, you're saying what's different. And you'll be able to gain an understanding of that through this information here. And then, of course, the video as well. So it's meant to be a very brief Venn, di Venn diagram to kind of jog your thinking. Task three is more notes on why Confucius is significant. So number one, his teachings on the importance and the role of the family influenced how people lived and behaved. They also apply to modern Chinese business practices, the education system and government policy. So we can still see the legacy of Confucius is quite prominent today. Confucianism became the official philosophy of China during the Han Dynasty. The Chinese life was modeled around his teachings because the government liked Confucianism. Chinese rulers liked it because it taught people to respect authority and that having a strong government was important. Confucius's teachings remained an important part of Chinese culture and government up until the 20th century. So your remaining task for this lesson, task four is a character profile, task five is source work, and then task six is an extension appeal paragraph that does need to be completed for homework if it isn't finished today. If you're a teacher watching this as well, you might give this lesson to your class in a double period too. So task four is a character profile. If you're learning at home, you can click on the tab and print like so using the button there. However, if you're learning in class, your teacher will provide you with this worksheet. So what you need to do is complete this character profile on Confucius. So you can draw a picture of him here. In my time of teaching the unit on ancient China, I've seen some pretty, some pretty outlandish and pretty good pictures on Confucius. So that's a good little activity there. So we need his name when he was born, when he was died, he wrote a text called, he lived during the something period of ancient China, and then some extent, oh, some short answer, short paragraph responses there. And then you can use uh, the information on this website as well as further information on Google to finish that one. Task five is source work, so complete the questions in your book. So source one is a secondary source on a rewritten or a, what you would call like a recreation of the Analects. So, Confucius wrote this a long, long time ago, but it had been created in 55 BC by an, uh, by an unknown scribe. So they'd copied, they'd copied it so they could preserve his teachings. It was discovered in 1973 in China. So what is the source of the Analects? It's uh, a copy of Confucius's teachings. When was the source made? It was made then. Who made it? With the only information we have is an unknown scribe. Is it a primary or secondary source? Well, it is technically a secondary source because it's a recreation. So you can, this version was written on bamboo strips and has been created in 55 BCE. That's after the time of Confucius, so it must be a secondary source. What can this source tell us about ancient China? Well, for one, it can tell us what they wrote on, what their writing looked like. Um, and it also can tell us that they really valued the Confucius's information and teachings and practices. Source number two is a secondary source on a book written by Michael Schumann called Confucius and the World He Created. It was written in 2015. So what is the source? It is a book. When was it made? 2015. Who made it? We've got the author here, Michael Schumann. Is it a primary or secondary source? It is secondary because it is a book about Confucius. So it's a reconstruction of his knowledge, a recollection of his knowledge as well, and his teachings and his life. 
What sort of information about Confucianism would be in this book? Well, if you read the description here, it'll tell you the answer for that one. Source number three is a good source. It's actually an article, so you've got to click into it to read what it actually says. It's a newspaper article on the largest Confucius statue. Click the link here to access the article, which we've done. So what is the source? It's an article. It's a news article. When was the source made? Good question. It was made on the 21st of September 2018. You're going to have to look a little bit to find the answers. Who made it? So we need our author here, Simone McCarthy. Is it a primary or secondary source? Again, it is a secondary source. Uh, it is, if it was a photo of the statue or the source of the statue itself, it would be a primary source, but this is a secondary source. And collect three facts from the article about Confucianism or Confucius, and you can find those in the information here. There's plenty of information there. Source four is a painting of Confucius at his residence, giving a lecture at Zenji, kneeling before him to ask about fi uh, filial piety painted by Ma Hezi during the Song Dynasty. So what is the source? It's a painting. When was it made? The only information that tells us is during the Song Dynasty. What makes this source a secondary source? Because it was made during the Song Dynasty and Confucius lived during the uh, Zhao Dynasty. And this is a painting of him giving a teaching and a lecture. So this must be a secondary source. Why do you think this source was made so long after Confucius' death? Well, it speaks to the fact that people in China still really valued his teachings and who he was as a person. And it describes and outlines almost to us the impact that Confucianism had on the lives of people in China and such importance they held him in as well. Task six, the last task for this lesson, is to answer this question as a peel paragraph. You have 10 minutes to answer it. There's a bit of a guide here to help you. So explain who Confucius was and the role his teachings had on ancient Chinese society. Pretend this is worth five marks. It's good for exam practice. So use the above information to help uh, you finish the question. It's a good five, a good five mark answer should go for about three quarters of a page or more. So remember PL stands for point, your opening sentence, explain, explain your topic further. An example, so you want to have an example to support your point and your explain, and a link, link back to the question, make sure you're answering it. Link back to your point as well, you should be answering it in your point too. And if you're a teacher, you can start the timer on the board for the students to be in there, 10 minutes to answer this question here. Really good exam prep. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this lesson on Confucius, there was a bit to get through there. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to stay updated to any new lessons that are made in existing websites like this one, or if you want to stay updated to any new websites I make as well. Thank you.